Good morning. Happy Wednesday. So I broke the lid from my old ball jar. This is a bicentennial jar. I need a new lid. Does anyone know where I can get a lid for my bicentennial jar? I really hate to glue it. Hmm. So today I want to read you a little story called The Value of $100. One brisk winter day in December, a man named Scott and his wife Erin were finishing their annual holiday shopping trip. On the way back home, Erin noticed a man holding a cardboard sign on the side of the road. With great pity in her eyes, she asked her husband for cash to give to the man. No way, Scott replied. He'll just blow it on booze and cigarettes. Aaron looked at him in disbelief. Scott, he doesn't even have a coat. I've seen news stories on this exact thing, Scott said. He's either gonna buy booze and cigarettes with it, or he really owns a mansion in the suburbs, purchased from the money that he's exploited from the kindness of strangers. But Aaron could not accept that. She reminded him it was the season of giving. Scott begrudgingly agreed to give the man $100 on the condition that they would follow him to see how it was spent. Scott, that's cruel, Aaron exclaimed. Sweetie, I'm not trying to be cruel, Scott explained patiently. I just want you to have a glimpse of the real world so that you'll stop allowing yourself to be taken advantage of. Erin thought about this for a moment and reluctantly agreed. She was disappointed with her husband for wanting to do this, but decided it was worth it if it meant giving to someone in need. Scott turned the car around and headed back to the corner where the man was standing. He pulled over and grabbed a $100 bill out of his wallet, got out his car, and jogged over to the man. The man eyed Scott questioningly, questioningly and not sure whether to be worried or hopeful. His skin was thick, leathery, leathery and wrinkled, as if he had spent the majority of his time outside, and his clothing looked as though it had been through a garbage disposal and then thrown in the mud. Silently, Scott banked his money on the booze and the cigarettes. Hello, sir, Scott said, smiling as he approached the man. Good afternoon and happy holidays to you, said the man. Though he returned the smile, Scott thought the man still looked surprised as if not many people spoke to him directly. And to you, buddy. My wife felt like you could use a new coat and some warmer clothes, so we wanted to give you this in hopes that you could buy yourself something nice for the holidays. Scott reached out his hand and offered the man a $100 bill. The man looked down at Scott's hand and recoiled with shock. No, no sir, I, I couldn't possibly take that. That's way too much. Scott was not sure how to react. Why, why would he not take the money? Is that not what he was out here begging for? Come on now, I insist. It's a gift. Do with... Do with it whatever you want. The man looked at Scott in disbelief. Are you sure you don't need that? Positive, Scott extended his hand and closer to the man. With tears welling up in his eyes, the man took the money from Scott and stared at it for a moment, as if unsure of what to do. Scott was getting ready to head back to the car when the man said, Sir, thank you. Thank you so much. Happy holidays. Sure, you too, buddy. Scott headed back to his car where Aaron was waiting. Together they pulled into the parking lot of a liquor store, not far from the street corner, so they could watch what the man did through their rear view mirror. You should be ashamed of yourself, Aaron grumbled. Scott rolled his eyes and continued watching the man. 
A man packed his cardboard sign and mug into an oversized bag lying on the ground next to him. And then he picked up the bag and immediately headed to the liquor mart. Scott looked at Aaron, who was still watching the mirrors intently. Have you seen enough yet? He's in the liquor mart buying booze and cigarettes. No, Aaron said firmly. We don't know that. Let's just see what he comes out with and where he goes. This was your idea anyway. Nearly 20 minutes passed before the man came out carrying several bags. He walked back towards the corner, crossed the intersection, and began heading into the park across the street. Scott backed out of the parking stall and followed him. Once at the park, Scott pulled over and watched as the man put his bags down on the picnic table. Even though there was snow on the ground, there were several people at the park, including a few children dressed in similar manners as the man, with tattered and thin clothes. These, these people live here, Aaron murmured. Scott could not think of anything to say, so he just continued watching as the man began pulling packages of food, water, and gloves out of his bags. He began distributing the various items to multiple people in the park. They all smiled and laughed, and some even hugged him. Scott felt a sudden knot in his stomach and a burning in his throat. He looked at Aaron, who was already sniffling and had tears streaming down her cheeks. Moved by the sudden impulse, Scott stepped out of the car and walked over to the man. Surprise splayed across the man's face as he noticed Scott coming toward him, and then he smiled. It's you, he said. Do you see how much joy you've brought here? Your gift was truly wonderful. I didn't bring this joy. That was you, buddy, Scott replied. I didn't expect. Do you know, do you know these people? The man shook his head. I don't understand, said Scott. You could have gotten anything you wanted. Why did you spend it on strangers? The man looked at him gravely. Eight months ago, this wasn't my life. Eight months ago, I wouldn't have noticed these people or given them a second thought. Or if I had, I probably would have thought they did something to deserve being here. <sighs> he sighed. But sometimes things happen. Disasters happen, leading you to places you've never imagined. Now that I've been here, now that I've gone days without food, gloves, or shelter, I wouldn't wish it on my worst enemy. Now that I've experienced suffering, I would do anything to alleviate it for others. These people don't deserve being here, especially these poor little kids. Normally, I have nothing to give them, nothing to offer. But today, you gave me the chance to make more than just myself happy. Today, you brought joy and happiness to all these people, all by deciding to help one man. Scott stared at the man for a few moments, and then he pulled out his wallet. Suddenly, he gave the man the leftover cash from his shopping, knowing it would be put to good use. Scott went back to his car. Aaron was leaning against it, waiting for him. He hugged her tightly. Forever changed and truly touched by what he had witnessed that day. I hope this story reminds us of what the holiday season is truly about. Wherever you are and no matter what you have to offer, try to remember that loving and taking care of each other and by spreading hope to as many people as possible we can make this truly the most wonderful time of the year. Merry Christmas. I know my mug doesn't go with it. I need a Christmas mug.
Anyway, have a good day. I turn.